welcome back. This is episode 57 in our Let's Play series of Space Engineer Survival. Uh, I've done some things off camera. Um, there's a new version of Space Engineers. I need to restart my game to get that, but I haven't done that. I did some other stuff off camera besides that. Um, made some changes in here. Um, I now have a list of ores that may or may not be on the priority list. I think this is all of them, in no particular order. Um, in addition to processing the RSN command, you'll also handle refinery commands with the process refinery commands. Uh, let me actually do this in order. Um, all of this was here before. So the change I made is here. Um, I created this find item slot method instead of find item on the inventory interface. Um, it returns an integer, so it returns the actual slot in the inventory that, in this inventory that this item is in, starting at the start index. Because something that I missed earlier with find item um, is that if you have multiple stacks of the same item in an inventory, it will only catch the first one. It won't get the the follow-on ones. So we start at the start index. Initially, this is negative one. So a start index plus one initially will start at zero if you don't pass in a parameter. Uh, it will go up to the number of items in the inventory, and then it will try to get the item at that index. And if the type is equal to the item type that you're looking for, it returns that that index. Otherwise, it returns negative one if it's not found. Uh, so we find item at slot is item slot. If it's not negative one, then we found something, um, and then we add get item at slot or get item at that slot the amount we have to cast it because it's one of those nullable my inventory item things so we have to cast it back to a, a regular one so we can get the amount if it is a negative one then we return false we're done um, now here uh, if it's not connected we know it's not going to be one of our refineries or if it is connected rather we know it's not going to be one of our refineries so we don't have to worry about it here um, so we're worrying about it here and we're instead of checking the block definition, we're checking our list of refinery priorities to see the keys if it contains the block that we're looking at, which is the refinery. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it if it's the refinery, if it's one of the refineries that we've prioritized, it'll be in this list. So if it's in that list of um, prioritized refineries, then we're going to return false if it is on the construct as well so it has to be a refinery in um, I'm confusing myself here okay so if it's not connected then we will transfer the inventory we'll use the item slot if the item slot is greater than or equal to zero then we'll use it so it stacks on top of anything that's already in there if it's not in there already, then we will put it at the end, the refinery inventory item count. So there's two slot we're finding the item in the refinery inventory. So like if it's already in the refinery inventory, uh, then we'll put it on top of the other one. Otherwise, we'll put it at the end. And we'll try to stack them. That's what that parameter is. So that's what's happening there. And now we're finding the ones that are following on. So if we found something initially, then we get this. So it'll come in here already, like it'll come in here the first time, and then we'll change item slot starting from the one that we found already in the same inventory looking for the same ore, same inventory, same ore, but we're starting where we left off, so we'll look for the next one. If it's still not negative one, we found another one, so we'll add that amount on to this that we're returning. And now here at the bottom, we've moved everything that is off the construct so we want it to be added to this list of blocks that we're going to go through again um, if it is if it is on the same construct and it is still not a connected inventory so if it's is this right I might have this backwards. Let 
No, I don't have it backwards. Okay, so if it is in our refinery list, then this will be false. If it is on the construct, this will be false. So if either one of those is false, the whole thing is false and it won't end up on the list. If they're both true, that means that it is... If these are both true and the whole thing is true, that means that... Yeah, I think this is backwards. At least this one. I haven't gotten that far yet because I'm still processing the ore on the Mega Miner container, so I haven't not hadn't noticed it. So if it is on the grid, it is part of the same construct, but it is not one of our ref prioritized refineries, then it will end up on the list. Yeah, that's right. This is correct now. Let me update that before it gets screwed up. So yeah, we're still working through this. We're almost done with it. And then we'll do that. And then we'll start doing that. And it should come through now because I fixed that bit. If it doesn't, we'll know that I got it backwards. Um, anyway, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so this is where we are. If it is on the construct, but it's not one of our prioritized refineries, then it can be added to the list. So then for each block that ends up on the list, get the inventory, same as before. Find the item slot. I think I need that while loop in again. I need the while loop still. Um... Get inventory. Find item slot. Or to find. Oh, that's where I'm doing it here. Um, so transfer it from the. I don't know, I'm not doing it here. I'm not looping through. But that's, no, that's okay. That's fine because I'm not actually counting them here. I'm I'm moving them. So the next tick, it'll catch it. If, if it finishes one stack, it'll move on to the next one by the next tick, and that's good enough. Because it only, it, I mean, the magnesium it only goes through like 13 kilograms in in one run of the program, which is 100 ticks. So yeah, I think that's fine. Um, okay, yeah, I've confused myself there a little bit. Sorry about that. All right, so we find the two slots, same as we do up here, so that we can try to stack them um, if there's already something in there. Otherwise, we put it at the end. But this is this is just doing the same thing as this, except where we have to get the, the inventory again first. Uh, yeah, so that's what that's doing. Then it returns the amount. So we went over that. Now, the commands. Um, I added a clear command because uh, before I added the, the thing about stacking it, this bit, uh, I ended up putting, I was just putting it at the end every time. So I ended up, that's how I know exactly how many kilograms are in 100 ticks worth of magnesium processing. Because I had a whole bunch of stacks of 13 that kept adding another one and another one and another one and it wouldn't stack them. Um, and to clean all that up, I could have either moved them all manually, or I could just clear everything out of the refinery and let it reload itself. So I did that, and I built a command to do that. Because when we, we prioritize things, we're going to want to just go ahead and clear what's in there, and then have it added back in using the correct priority. And I am also concerned, and this is something that we'll have to deal with later, uh, it's basically another feature at this point, that if we have magnesium refining, for example, which is lower priority than stone, and then we put more stone into the system, or, you know, come back with the mega miner full of stone, um, it's not going to clear out the, uh, the refinery. So it's going to have to chew through what it's got, and it'll be putting the stone at the end still.
No. It'll be putting in a very small amount of stone at the beginning because it'll chew through some of the magnesium and then it'll put in stone and then it'll put in stone. So it's going to be a little bit funky the way that that works. And we might want to have some way to figure out how to clear it automatically so that we don't have to do it manually in that situation. But we'll come to that later. We'll deal with that at a later point. Um, anyway, the uh, clear command is really straightforward because we've already got this sort block inventory for the, the inventory sorting. We just never sorted the input inventory of the refinery because anything that was in there we wanted to keep in there. So if the command is clear, first of all, I'm just using, uh, I, I started using the, the my command line API, but I'm not using it to identify refinery commands. I just say, so if, if the, the first part of the argument is refinery, then process the refinery commands. And here I'm parsing it. Um, it it's kind of similar to the my I and I thing with the, the try parse and all that. Um, so then argument two is going to be actually the third piece of the argument. And that's the refinery name. So you'll say, you know, uh, you'll run the, the, the programmable block with the argument uh, refinery clear SIC refinery one, for example. So it'll get the refinery name. If the refinery is not null and the uh, refinery priorities list contains our refinery, so we're only going to let this operate on prioritized refineries, on coded refineries. Um, if it's not, you know, otherwise, in other words, if it, if it can't find the refinery at all, or if the refinery is not one of the ones that we have configured to work with the priority system, then it's going to come down here and say, can't find prioritized refinery, whatever you looked for. Uh, if argument one, which is the second piece of it, is clear, then we sort the block inventory doing the, the input inventory, which like I said, we just never did. Um, we have it down here in the sort inventory. If it's a refinery, it just does inventory one, which is the output inventory where all the ingots go. So that we wanted to do, but we didn't want the input to be done automatically because we want to keep it in there to actually refine. So just this is how we clear it by saying go ahead and sort that inventory. So that one's pretty straightforward. Um, now, then we just say, you know, this refinery's input inventory has been cleared. The next possible command, and this is the one that was, was fun to implement, um, priority plus and priority minus. So the way that this one works is it's refinery, priority plus, and the name of the refinery, and then the or name that you want to move the priority up or down for. Uh, plus moves it higher in priority, minus moves it lower in priority, and either way, it's going to call adjust refinery priority against the refinery with the refinery command. So that way, still, if you can't find the refinery, it'll still come down here. If it doesn't match these commands, then it'll say unknown refinery command, whatever command you send. Now, adjust priority or adjust refinery priority takes in the refinery and the command line that you created from the the arguments is increase is just a boolean if the argument that you used here contains plus then it's an increase if it doesn't then it contains minus and this would be false um, or this is the or that we're trying to refine or we're trying to shift the priority for so that's going to be argument three which is actually the fourth piece of the thing um, now this is for error checking is invalid command we assume that it's an invalid command to start with and then when we get through all of our error conditions, if we didn't find one, then we'll set is invalid command to false. So our error conditions are if our ORs list that we created up here at the top does not contain our OR, invalid OR type for um, priority plus or priority minus, whatever the, the actual command was, OR. So whatever OR you sent in was invalid. If refinery priorities for the refinery does not have a priority set for the or that you specified it's just going to create one and it's going to create one at the end so when you like I, you can see i've got cobalt here that was created using this command um so if you put in iron it would not be there to start with but there's four items here so it would uh set the priority for iron on this refinery to however many uh, ores are already prioritized plus one so it'd be five but this is still an error condition so it won't do any of the the work here it'll just skip down to the end where it 
saves the configuration back to the custom data. And we're using the my I and I thing to set that now, and I'll, I'll go over that in a second when I get to it. Um, now, if is increased, so if we're trying to increase priority, and the priority for that ore on that refinery is already one, the ore is already set to the maximum priority in this refinery. So it can't go up any higher. We're done. We bail. If it's not an increase, and the refinery priority for that ore on that refinery is already equal to the number of ores that are configured, then the ore is set to the minimum priority in that refinery. So that's also an error condition. So if we do any of this, we're not going to evaluate this else command because we did all that we did one of these beforehand. So invalid command is now true. If not is invalid command. So since it's true, we're going to skip that and we're just going to do the the my ini stuff and save the configuration as is. Um, if we do either of these two, nothing happened. If we do this one, nothing happened. But if we do this one, we did actually make a change to the refinery priorities dictionary. Uh, so that will have to be saved here. And that's what's being done in this little bit here. Um, and like I said, we'll get to that in a minute. But if we didn't find any of these error conditions, is invalid command gets set to false. This if condition now evaluates the true because it's an exclamation point for not. Um, so we get the current or priority for the ore that we're looking for on the refinery that we're working with. And we have the new or priority is the current or priority is increase is true it's going to be minus one because you know lower number is higher priority if it isn't an increase then it's going to be one so it's going to be plus minus one meaning minus one or it's going to be plus one meaning plus one um, so this is going to be a higher number if we're decreasing the priority a lower number if we're increasing the priority now this one's uh, another little trick uh, get or at priority because we want to swap it so if you know we're increasing the priority of cobalt we need to find like it, uh, it's at four now so if we set it to three we need to find out what ore is currently priority three so that we can sw set it to four as we move up the, the list and you know vice versa if we want to move uranium down when we set it to three we need to find out what's currently at three so we can set it to two and we do that with this get ore at priority using the refinery and the priority we're looking for so for each key value pair or priority and refinery priorities for that refinery if the or priority value is equal to the priority we're looking for return the key so it return the or name otherwise return an empty string so then um, I should probably put an error condition in here to check that but that's not super important I don't think because we've already checked whether or not that's valid here um, so anyway uh, refinery priorities refinery or at new priority so you know the magnesium that we're trying to swap whatever out with is now equal to the current ore priority and the refinery priorities for the refinery the ore we're actually changing is now the new priority and then we just say the ore has been increased or decreased in priority so now the my i and i thing um, just create a new one and then for each key value pair in the refinery priorities dictionary for that refinery we set the section priority or priority key which is the or name or priority value which is the priority value and then we can echo it out and that'll just show it on the, the details but then we save it to custom data as from using the two string so that's pretty straightforward um, and that is all of the code changes that I have done here I don't think I changed anything here but just to make sure okay so this is now set to refinery priority minus on the uh, Space Industrial Complex Refinery 1, which is the one that we're looking at for Cobalt. If I run that, Cobalt is set to minimum priority in SSC Refinery 1. And it's our list, so it's already set to the, the lowest priority that it, that it has, so it doesn't do anything. I can run that, you know, as many times as I want to, nothing changes. On the other hand, if I set this to plus, so now this is Refinery Priority Plus SSC Refinery 1 for Cobalt cobalt priority increased and you can see that when it refreshed it it popped that up in the priority list I can run it again moves up again run it again moves up again it takes a second to refresh because it's it's only doing this every hundred ticks it does this immediately um, so now you can see that's the cobalt is on top if I try to run it one more time cobalt is set to maximum priority in SSC refinery one so it doesn't do anything I can set it back to priority minus run 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 and it goes down to the bottom. 
now if I do gold run gold is down number five it gets added to the bottom I can do plus move it up the list I can change this to say silver it doesn't matter if you're plus or minus if it's not on the list it just gets added to the bottom Now if I try to add something that's not valid, ice is a valid ore, but it's not for the refinery, so it's not on the list. Invalid ore type for priority plus, ice. Or if I just put something completely bogus in here, invalid ore type for priority plus, blah 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 blah, and that doesn't do anything. There's no changes here. So anyway, those are the changes that I made off camera. You see that that's working nicely. What we're going to do in this episode is we are going to turn this into a menu. So we will be able to, using um, commands from the... That's something else that I did. That's all the coding that I did already, but I also put in two control stations, one on each side, um, and I set up the, the hot bars so that item one will turn off the refinery and two will clear the inventory. It runs that clear command. Um, so just to show you that in action, I also set it, by the way, I missed that change when I was going over these, let me just show you that real quick, uh, 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 and the adjust refinery priority, is that where I put it? No, that's not where I put it, it's in prioritize refinery, so we're checking if it's connected already, we're also checking now if it's enabled, so if it's, if the refineries turned off we're not going to stick anything in it makes sense um, which also makes it easier to demonstrate how this works if I turn the refinery off and then check the inventory real quick first just to show you that there's currently stuff in there but it's not doing anything now if I clear and then check the inventory again it's now empty and it's not refilling because it's turned off now if I turn it on you can hear it powering back up it's reloaded, it's working, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So that's the other thing I did. Now, menu. Um, the whole point is that we want to be able to run commands to you know, advance our selection, to increase the priority, decrease the priority of whatever we're selecting, so we don't have to remember all of these commands and type them in and run them manually in the, the programming block through the terminal. We'll just be able to you know, come in here and hit three, and it will you know, change our selection to whatever ore we're looking for, and then you know five or six or whatever it is to increase or or decrease the priority now this is something else that I've never done so bear with me we're gonna have a good time figuring this out and the way I think I am going to do it is I am going to have a dictionary of menus and they are going to be indexed by string and they are going to have an int saying what position in the menu is currently selected so this is going to be menu indices. And for the sake of consistency, I'm not putting a space there. Doesn't matter, it won't break anything if you do. I'm just trying to keep my coding style consistent. All right, so that's our menu. And then I think that is sufficient. No, that is not quite sufficient. We have at least one menu that I know of. No, we have two menus. Do we have two menus? One for each refinery. So menu indices, and this can this is a string, so this can have spaces and everything in it. So this is going to be SIC refinery one priority. And this is something I think I want to have save. To the the storage I'm 
We also need one for refinery too. And we are going to do that. Using the my INI thing again. We're gonna call it. Doesn't really matter what we call it because there's not, yeah there is something in it. We're gonna call it save data. So we actually are gonna have to load it in the instantiation here, but let's save it first. Okay, so save data is a new my INI. And then we're going to do save data dot set menus. No, we're not going to do it quite like that. We're going to do for each key value pair of string ints menu index in menu indices save data dot set menu comma menu index dot key to menu index dot value and then storage equals save data to string now here we need to read that back out so if storage dot length is not equal to zero. So if there's anything in storage, then my INI save data is a new my INI. My INI parse result is a new my INI parse result if save data dot try parse storage if save data dot contains section is that what it was was it contain section or contain section prioritize refining try parse oh I need to do that out contain section yeah try parse storage out result contain section menu. I'm going to call it menus. Then we need to do get keys. Is that what it was? keys. First we need to create a list to put them into. List my I and I key. Menu keys. List my I and I key. Save data dot get 
keys menus menu keys for each my I and I key menu key in menu keys menu indices menu key dot key equals menu key dot value close that if close that if close that if all right, so that should save and reload all of our menu indices, and I broke a bunch of stuff. And we specified a variable declaration. Line 16. That's not what's happening here. That's the index in the dictionary what did I mess up Does it not like that I have spaces in my string? No, that's not the problem. Okay, good. That would be an issue. Just got the same problem with the other one. Menu indices at there equals zero. What's the issue here? It's the same thing I'm doing. Here. Except I'm just the same thing I'm doing here. For each key. Oh, is that one? Yeah, that's what the problem is. No, it's not. I mean, I think I'm doing this wrong. Yeah, I am. I'm doing this wrong. That's not the issue. The issue's here for some reason. Dictionary, string, and menu indices. Did I spell something wrong? No. I don't get it.
All right. Well, they can set a default value. Storage length does not equal zero. What if I try doing it down here? the bracket that I don't need. Okay, it seems to be okay doing it down here. I guess it doesn't want me to do it in the declaration. Alright, fair enough. Seems a little silly, but alright. I, I do need it, though, because I need another menu. Two. Alright, so my INI first result new thing is a type that is usually like a variable on like 31. Oh, because I didn't actually do that. My INI key does not contain a definition for key. Does not contain a definition for value. Yeah, I knew that. Menu key, menu keys. Is menu key dot what is that? I forget what it's called. My IP blah 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 blah. <laughs> Priority key to string. Okay. Dot to string dot split on the slash because that's going to have the section name first and get the second part. And I'm going to line wrap that. Save data dot get menu key. Then I need to convert it. Yeah. Dot two int thirty two the default value of zero. There we go. All right. So this is how we're going to save where in the menu we are. We're setting the default values here if it's not configured already. And actually, instead of doing that nonsense like that, I'm going to set it up here. Because I also need it to be set, not just if it can't parse it, which will create a default value, and not just if the storage length is empty. So if there's no storage, that would have worked. But if there is storage, but it can't parse the result, it wouldn't do it. If it didn't have a menu, that wouldn't do it. So now it's done ahead of time, and it'll just get changed if there's something in storage. All right, so there's that. Next, we need to set the menu to handle it. And we're going to do that with else if argument dot split zero to upper contains menu pro 
process menu commands. Now the advantage of using the my command line is that if you put an argument in quotes it counts as all one argument. You don't have to do some logic to figure that out. So we're going to do that again. Okay, so it was able to parse the menu command. Now we need to do if menu command dot argument zero, so the first argument to upper equals menu plus is this good enough because this will store the index but it won't store the maximum it doesn't have any idea how far it's allowed to go These do not have to be reloaded from storage, but we do have to initialize them. Although this is going to change. The two that we have so far are going to change. Alright, so we'll deal with that when we get to it. So if menu command argument zero to upper equals menu plus if menu command dot argument one no if menu indices dot keys contains menu command argument one and menu sizes dot keys contains menu command dot argument one Um, menu indices menu command argument one plus plus if menu indices menu command argument one greater than menu sizes menu command argument one menu indices menu command argument one equals zero
I do it like that. No, I don't think I do. I'm going to do it the same way I did the uh, other one. First of all, I forgot a parenthesis here. I'm going to do or menu command dot argument zero to upper equals menu minus. Okay, so if it's plus or minus then it's going to make sure that the menu is valid. But then we're going to do this. save some space here. String menu main equals menu command argument one. Now that I've spent all this time typing it out already. So the index has to have the menu name, the size has to have the menu name. And then we will look for the index at the menu name. And it's going to be set to menu indices menu name plus. If it's an increase, then it's going to be plus 1. If it's not an increase, it's going to be plus minus 1. And then if it's too big, it's going to get reset to 0. Else if menu indices menu name less than zero then menu indices menu name equals menu sizes
think, though. No, I'm going to make menu sizes the same as like length or count or whatever. I'm going to have it be one indexed. So that means that I need to do minus one here. So it'll pick the last index rather than being out of range. So if it can't find the menu index and it can't or it can't find the menu size, the menu name is not configured properly. If the menu command is not menu plus or menu minus, invalid menu command. Valid menu command, menu command argument zero. And that's the try parse, and I'm just going to assume that that's going to work. I don't know why that wouldn't work. Movie break. Missing a parenthesis somewhere. Uh, 85. No, it's because I did that. successful. Alright, so now in the prioritize refining when we're adding things to the list here based on the configuration for each priority key to add to the appropriate menu. Oh. Okay. We've got the refinery. So we will do menu sizes If menu sizes dot keys dot contains refinery dot custom name space dash space priority called it. Custom name priority menu. Yeah. So if it's already there, then menu sizes if 
refinery dot custom name priority menu. Oh, hold on. This runs every tick. So we don't want to do it this way. We just want to do up here when we grab the refinery. We'll do menu sizes. Space priority menu zero and then down here we'll do that plus plus. So since this runs every tick, we can't have this just adding to it if it's already there. If it's not there, or if it is there rather, it'll just keep on adding and it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger and it'll not work correctly. So we need to clear it every time, but that's okay. That won't be a problem because this is gonna run every 100 ticks, whereas the sizes are only gonna be relevant, we're only gonna be looking at it when we actually run the command. So as long as it's been done at least once, we won't have an issue. Now, the trick is to display the selection, which means we got a monkey with this. Because we need to insert an indicator here if it's the selected or type. How do we do that? using a for loop it would be easy but I'm using a for each loop well I think one way to do it is to just set an index outside and increment it Int priority index equals zero. Display item equals priority index equals menu indices refinery dot custom name space dash space priority menu a better way to do that.
Just do it the once. So now when we're incrementing the size, we can just use menu name. And then when we're checking the index, we can just use menu name. Display item plus equals all the that. Display item plus equals priority index equals menu indices menu name display item that should be it no that's not quite it I still need to do priority index plus plus that should be it as soon as I close my parentheses properly now stone should be selected yep now if I do don't need that part if I do menu plus SIC refinery one priority menu run that it advances to gold uranium silver magnesium cobalt stone cool so that's working um, now that looks a little bit funky there with it over on the, the side so I actually want to do uh, text alignment and I know there's this code for it but I don't remember off the top of my head what it is so I'm look that up real quick it's probably something silly like text alignment equals text alignment dot center but give me one second I'll look it up and then I'll know for sure rather than guessing and spending even more time getting it wrong text surface where is it My text surface alignment equals text alignment dot center. So now down here, when we are configuring these text panels, in addition to content type and font color, we will do surface dot alignment equals text alignment dot center. So now, the last thing we need to do is modify our adjust refinery priority command so that 
the or can be set from the menu. And I know the way I want to do that is if or equals no or to upper equals menu then okay so they're in priority order and they're offset by one so magnesium is priority five putting it at index four zero one two three four so that means oh we can use the get or at priority then or equals get or at priority for this refinery at menu indices refinery dot custom name this is the only time we have to do this so I'm not going to put it in a variable Priority. Plus one. All right. So now, if we do Binary priority plus of SIC refinery one menu. This should move up the magnesium. Yep. Except it selects the silver. So we, one more thing that we want to do is we want to um, adjust the menu index. So we are actually going to use this a second time, which is enough times for me to put it into a variable. So now silver is the one selected. So the way that this will work, before we did this, is it would really just keep sending it, it would keep swapping it back and forth, and that's not what we want to do. What we want it to do is we want to trace it all the way up. So running it repeatedly should move it up to the top or move it down to the bottom as you keep doing it. I didn't hit compile. So now silver should move up. And then silver should move up again, silver should move up again, silver should move up again, silver should move down, silver should move down again, down again, down again, down again. Perfect. Nailed it. 
All right. So now what we need to do is set up the controls. Um, as I see controller. Run. And on three, we're going to do menu. SIC refinery one priority menu. No, this needs to be menu plus that. Okay, so that wraps correctly. And then next we're going to do menu minus SIC refinery one priority menu. And then we're going to do refinery priority plus SIC Refinery one menu. So if I go down a selection, oh, hit the wrong button. It's working correctly, I'm just hitting the wrong button. Those are a little bit counterintuitive the way that I set that up. Menu minus SIC refinery one priority menu. Refinery one priority menu. So now when I do five, it should move uranium up. Yep. And now I'm going to do refinery priority minus SIC refinery one menu. I should move uranium down. Perfect. And that is it. Uh, we still need to add the priorities manually. Uh, one thing that we could do is we could set up a command that would do inventory of all the ores and eliminate ice. So any ore that we have on the ship on the 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 complex could be um, added. We could also set it up to delete things that are not, um, or things that are currently selected, so like the current selection could be deleted, uh, we do, basically what we would do then is we'd be able to press a button to add all, and then we'd go through and knock out the ones that we don't want, or we could just add them manually through the terminal. <laughs> um, but we still have some keys left, I mean we've got three on the first toolbar, and then we've got, you know, what is it, eight more toolbars. So we got plenty of room for commands. Um, what would probably also make sense is to put a list of the commands uh, on this screen, just so that we know what we're doing, because there's really no way to see what's happening here. Like, it just says SIC controller run. Like, with a button panel, you can put labels on the buttons. But to my knowledge, you cannot label the hotbar commands. If I'm wrong about that, by all means, let me know in the comments. I mean, I don't get a whole lot of comments, so I don't know how many people would really know that that are watching this. But if you know of a way to put labels on that, I'd love to know what it is. Um, cause as it is, you either, you really just have to memorize it or you have to redo the whole thing or just try it and see what happens to you. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's how that works. That's how a menu works. We did a pretty good job with that. I think, uh, that, that went pretty well.
might be nice if that updated faster. You know what we can do? Um, find the controller again. This is the last thing, I promise. When we process menu commands... No. After this, what we're going to do is we're going to do... No, because that won't update, because it's the 100 tick thing. I was going to say we could have it run once, but it won't matter because it'll skip over this. Unless we specifically tell it to include that. Yeah, we'll screw with that later. There might It might be worth messing with that and making that do things, but, you know, it, it does work now. You just have to deal with the lag because it only updates every hundred ticks and when you run the command it you know runs immediately and you don't see anything happen until you uh, get that next update but yeah so that's that set up uh, we'll just do the same thing with the hotbar on the other side because um, we've got a, another control station over here it's got stone selected but there's no way currently to you know edit that selection except you know manually through the the terminal running the program block directly with arguments so we'll just have to set up the hotbar over here the same way that we've got it set up over here and like I said I think it would be useful to put you know kind of a help screen here to tell you what the commands do but that is that uh, in the next episode we will probably take a break from scripting because uh, I've done two fairly long scripting episodes, um, we'll go out and get some more card, come, some more stuff to refine. I think just so that we can prove that this is working correctly. Um, maybe we'll build a cargo shuttle. Because right now we're, we've been using the welder to go back and forth between here and the uranium mine. Uh, we've been flying the mega miner out to pick up, you know, stuff from the ice station or whatever. Uh, and we don't have anything really that makes sense to fly out to the the relay satellite and, and refill that. We've apparently been shooting stuff. I'm not sure what we've been shooting out there. It, it's a little worrying that we've had to shoot anything. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but yeah, so we might we might build ourselves a cargo drone or a cargo ship or one or the other. Well, I'll probably do, what I'll probably do is I'll have a cargo shuttle that has a remote control on it, so it can fly without us sitting on it, but it you know doesn't need to. Um, and we'll we'll test it out just by uh, going to pick up some uranium, and maybe we'll take the mega miner over to the same asteroid the uranium's on and drill up some stone too, just so we've got a bunch of stuff and we can I could dig up some silver too, just so we have more things to test with. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the plan for the next episode is at least to do the cargo drone and pick up some uranium, maybe fly the mega miner down and grab some stone as well, depending on how time works out. Um, probably really just have time to do the cargo drone to start with, but we'll do a, an episode or two, you know, in that whole vein to, to make sure that this priority thing works as well as I think it does. Um, I will get this top bar set up in between episodes. Um, for the time being, I'm going to set up this screen just to be help. It may be useful to have something else, some different information in there at a later date, uh, but we'll figure that out when it comes. Um, it would also be nice if I can figure out how to automatically configure the control station hotbars. I'm pretty sure that's not a thing. Um, it'd be nice if it was. But that is it for now. Subscribe to see all that. Likes, comments, and verbal abuse are welcome. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.